What did the founders believe would be the role of religion in American life? When the founders were birthing this nation, did they believe that faith, values, moral convictions, and yes, religion would be a significant part of the nation they were creating? Or did they just assume that the nation was and would remain a merely secular enterprise? We'll unpack these questions and more on today's edition of Truth for a New Generation. As you enter the rotunda of the U.S. Capitol, there are many statues, but one of the very first you see is a man uh, with a very ordinary name, but he had an extraordinary impact in the birth of this nation and really what America is. He was a man hugely influential in the lives of the founders. The statue you see as you enter the rotunda is the statue of a Baptist preacher, Roger Williams. Hi, Alex McFarland here. Welcome to today's edition of Truth For New Generation. Today we're going to unpack the question, what did the founders intend the role of religion to be in American life? And I begin by bringing up this figure, Roger Williams, hugely influential. Um, he was the founder of Rhode Island, and he was really big in the lives of the, the founders of the country because he really was one of the first, maybe the first, to use the phrase separation of church and state. But it didn't mean what people think it means today. A lot of people today, they think that the phrase separation of church and state means that uh, we're a nation free from the influence of religion. But what Roger Williams really meant by this was that the church and religious activity would be free from government intrusion. But let me give a little bit of backstory on Roger Williams, this Baptist preacher originally from England, so influential in the lives of the colonies. In 1636, he was uh, really exiled from the Massachusetts Bay Colony because he preached and taught and wrote that the, the King of England should not control the church. And he wrote about persecution for the sake of conscience. In other words, religious persecution uh, being wrong. And he, it's interesting. Williams was a fervent Christian. He was a Baptist preacher, my goodness. And in Providence, Rhode Island, which he would found, he built America's first Baptist Church, and it remains there to this day, although I don't think it's quite as theologically faithful to the Bible as it would have been in Roger's day. Uh, but he said the church shouldn't control the church, uh, the government shouldn't control the church. He was exiled from the Massachusetts Bay Colony, and he went into the wilderness and founded what is now the state of Rhode Island, a place for religious freedom. And it's very, very interesting, folks, that while he was a Christian, he preached religious toleration for all, which is one of the core values on which our nation is based. And he, he used the word permission. He said permission should be granted that anybody could believe whatever they want to believe. Christian, uh, Jew, non-Christian, you can believe what you want to believe, but uh, we are a nation founded on morals, the Judeo-Christian moral code. Now, this is where it gets really interesting because two of the people that most influenced America's founders, in addition to Roger Williams, who was a, a fervent Christian, but two of England's greatest judges, and you, you rarely ever hear, the, hear this, but one was a man named Johannes Althusius, and the other was a man named Edward Coke. Now, you don't hear of these names, Althusius. He was a brilliant scholar, fluent in seven languages. He translated the Bible, the Old Testament, from Hebrew to English and the New Testament from Greek to English. He was fluent in Latin and German, many languages. And he envisioned someday, Johannes Althusius said, what if a, a nation were built that were, were built on the law of Moses written on tablets of stone, but also the law of God written on every heart? Another person in the 1500s who shared that sentiment was Edward Coke, 
brilliant. The Queen, Queen of England said that this was the best lawyer in the world. And Edward Koch said that a nation should be built on the law of God, the moral compass written on each and every heart. Well, let me read a quote by a legal scholar of our times, John Eidsmo. He says that the influence of a judge or a lawyer often lives on in those who have served under him. One teenage boy who was Edward Koch's legal assistant, but who opted not to become a full-time lawyer, but a minister, was Roger Williams. So Williams comes to the colonies and takes with him all that he's learned about good civil government meshed with the principles of God's word and religious freedom, yet a society built and held together by God's moral truths. Very influential in the lives of our founders. Stay tuned. We're going to talk more about this on today's edition of Truth for a New Generation. There is something welcoming about prepared places. At The Cove, we extend that welcome every single day. From the panoramic views, chef-crafted meals, and spacious meeting rooms, to our serene mountain lodging, stone fireplaces, and inviting rocking chairs. Our setting, carved into 1,200 wooded acres of the Blue Ridge Mountains, and our personalized service will ensure that your group's visit is both memorable and renewing. No wonder we find such great comfort when Jesus says his Father's house has many rooms that he is preparing for us. So, the table is being set. Hearthside, the fires are ablaze. The stage is lit, the mic's checked. Come, experience this place prepared for you and your group at The Cove. For those that have followed my ministry for the last decade, you know a huge part of everything that I've been about for 10 years plus has been exploring the Word heard daily live on the American Family Radio Network throughout North America. And I'm very excited that right now we have uh, the VP of the American Family Association, Walker Wildman, and he is, among other things, a public policy analyst. And I've just come to appreciate him as a thinker and as a communicator, as a colleague, and as a friend. Walker, thanks for being with us for a few minutes today. Alex, it's great to be on your show. Well, hey, you know what? I want to talk about the role of religion in American life and why people of faith and values need to speak out. But just briefly, give some backstory how your, your grandfather started AFA, your dad is the president, and just what the American Families Association is all about right now. Yeah, AFA was started in 1977. My grandfather was a Methodist pastor, and he was growing very frustrated with uh, with secular media and with entertainment and how it wasn't very friendly, family friendly, especially starting in the 70s. And so, as a result of that, he started American Family Association as a way to fight back against the uh, secularization of our culture and and then the pushing of godless values to our children and grandchildren. So. Uh, we've been here being a voice for Christians across the country, and so every day we fight to influence culture and society and media for the gospel, and so that's what we're here for. You know, uh, Walker, as you and I filmed this, we are only days away from the election, and many people have said, you and I both have said, it is one of the most consequential elections in American history. Um, why do you think that is? Why is the place that we are politically, spiritually, why is it so significant? Well, I think as we as we see the years go by in our country and the decades go by, the what we're coming to realize more and more is that this is really a spiritual battle over the soul of our country. And so this is, this is not just a fight between Republicans and Democrats, a fight between politicians and power brokers in Washington, D.C. This is ultimately a fight over good and evil and which one will prevail in America. Will America continue to be a shining city on a hill? Will we continue to be an exporter of of the gospel and exporter of, of missionaries all across the world to convert people to Christianity? Or will we sink into just another country in history who falls for socialism, communism, 
and ultimately the destruction of society and the destruction of what was once a thriving and, uh, and, and, and great, one of the greatest countries in the world. So that's, that's the struggle we're facing now. And as the years go by, the, the battle only intensifies. So that's why we can say with honesty that each of these election cycles are so important because we can't drift into, into uh, an era of darkness in America. Instead, we have to continue to be light. You know, with the, um, the nomination of Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court, and again, as you and I filmed this, it, it does appear that she is going to get confirmed as the next Supreme Court justice. But, you know, when it, when it came out that she is a, a Catholic Christian and she believes in the Constitution, she's an originalist. Oh, my goodness, people like Bill Maher uh, w was cursing, just saying horribly unrepeatable things about her and Joy Behar on The View. And and others, um, you know, why the vitriol? When, let me set it up this way, Walker. If somebody is a leftist progressive, um, their worldview, it, it's, it's apparently okay. But if somebody is a conservative Christian constitutionalist, they are just, just murdered in the press by the left. Why the vitriol when somebody like a leader or an official has values? Well, I think it really boils down to the fact that we have many people in our country. Uh, I don't think a majority, but some people, especially in very powerful positions in our country, who simply hate God and they hate the things of God, which ultimately leads them to hate God's people. Um, and, and if you ask them that, they won't admit it. It's not as simple as that for them and their mind and their understanding because their, their mind is of the world and of the flesh. But when you boil it down, there's no really other explanation to the hatred and the vitriol. And it almost goes uh, a similar analogy or a similar situation is the people of Israel and how people, those Arab countries around Israel, they hate Israel vehemently. And when you look at, at, at Israel, but you look at it and you're like, so why are they hated so much? I mean, yeah, you can get some of the, some of the land disputes and, and that, but, but countries that aren't, don't even border Israel hate Israel because it's a spiritual battle and they hate the Jews because the Jews are God's people. So uh, th this ultimately boils down to uh, a spiritual fight. And you and I can see that because we understand scripture, we understand how God works, but the people of the world just don't get it. And, and for them, it it's a worldly fight. It's a political fight. And they ultimately want control of everything. You know, one of the bright spots in the spiritual battle that our land uh, faces, I, I believe one of the bright spots is what God is doing through the American Family Association and the American Family Journal, EngageMagazine.net, One Million Moms, and American Family Studios. In fact, one of uh, the things that we've been very proud of in recent years has been this award-winning DVD curriculum we created with American Family Studios. Uh, Tell about some of the various arms of the ministry, but also about In His Image, because that's very exciting. Yeah, so so one of the most popular arms of our ministry is American Family Radio, and that's where Alex uh, has his show, Exploring the Word, each weekday. Um, so we have various other programming, 24 hours a day, all across the country. And we're not just on FM radio stations, we're also on the internet. So that's a, expanding our reach. So we're reaching people for the gospel there. Uh, but we also have our AFA store, which, uh, which Alex's curriculum there, 21 quick questions uh, many of your kids will ask. That's on our store. That's actually been a top seller, um, and it's helped a lot of parents uh, learn how to answer questions for their children. So that's just a couple ministries. And then as you mentioned, the last thing I'll mention is our latest project, In His Image, uh, de uh, Delighting in God's Plan for Human Sexuality. So In His Image is an hour and a half, hour, 40-minute documentary which goes through four powerful testimonies about how God changed people's lives who were struggling with their sexual identity. And it shows that ultimately, Alex, God and the gospel and the Holy Spirit can bring people out of darkness and into light. So we tell that story and we bring hope to people who are struggling with their sexual identity.
You, you know, I appreciate this, Walker, uh, with American Family Studios. You, you've got uh, incredible thinkers like our mutual friend, Dr. Michael Brown. Uh, but the cinematography is stunning, folks. I mean, just the, the camera shots and the, the way it's produced, it's like some of the best film you'll ever see. And so talk about that. What led you guys to start that studio and do these, these high quality level productions? Yeah, well, what we realized years ago, probably over a decade ago, is we realized that that Hollywood was dominating the entertainment. I mean, they essentially were the entertainment industry of the world. And um, what we learned is in order to, to influence hearts and minds, oftentimes we have to produce the same quality, if not better, as uh, secular organizations and entities are doing. So that's what we strive to do here is we are producing um, Hollywood type documentaries and quality films and things like that. Uh, because we're, but we're doing it for the gospel. We're doing it for God, um, which is the opposite of what the world does. And so uh, you have to, what, what Christians uh, have to understand and Christian organizations have to understand is we have to, we have to compete. We have to compete for the minds and the hearts of, of America. And so in order to do that, you oftentimes have to produce high quality uh, films and high quality products too. So that's what we strive to do here. Well, and, and you're doing it. Hey, I've got a couple of more questions about uh, being salt and light in the culture, but give, give the websites. How can people find, or the, the apps for mobile devices, how can they find the American Family Association? Yeah, the easiest way to do it is to go to our main website, afa.net. There at afa.net, uh, you can find In His Image, the documentary we just spoke about. You can find our AFA store. Pretty much everything we do is under the banner of AFA. So you can visit afa.net there and find out all the information you need. Uh, two of my favorite writers, and, and I, I really mean this, and I do a lot of reading, folks, but you need to know who Ed Vitagliano is and also Abe Hamilton III. Uh, I cannot overstate how powerful and insightful they are. Um, Walker, how can people get the journal where they can read great writers like that? Yeah, we're actually doing right now a six-month uh, special where you can get this journal, the AFA Journal, our monthly magazine, for six months for free. Um, and then after six months, you'll be given the option to opt in or just not to opt in at all. Uh, so you can go to afajournal.org, afajournal.org, and there you can just enter your information. We will begin sending you six months of our journal. And the journal is is really filled with, with excellent information and a lot, a lot of paper copies of things and journals uh, sometimes aren't getting read as much anymore, but if you provide quality content, which the AFA Journal does, uh, it really helps families to really look through it and study uh, kind of what's going on in our society. So that's afajournal.org. Well, and, and you know, it's exciting. Like when, when I read uh, Ed Vitagliano's research and so many others, uh, Ann Reed and Sandy Rios, and I mentioned Abe Hamilton and, your, and yourself, um, what I want to convey to people is, look, be encouraged, whether you're talking about the Supreme Court or the, the government or, or the state of schools and education, look, be encouraged because the truth prevails. And so people, um, let me give you a final thought here. Walker. But um, I, I do think every citizen, number one, we want you to have a relationship with the Lord, but understand that you can make a difference. God designed you to make a difference. And I think our founding fathers, they, they expected that we would take ownership of our country and our destiny, didn't they? Yeah, they absolutely did. And look, we have to, we have to fight as if we're on the winning team because we are. Um, and we have to be smart. Christians have to be smart. We have to be diligent. We have to be obedient to God's word. And it's, it's time in our country that, you know, for, for years we've been complaining and, and, and basically uh, in a tough position over where our country is spiritually. But it's time that we wake up and do something about it. And it's time that we go on offense. Look, when you read about some of these Marxists and communists and Leninists and others, they have 40, 50, they, some of them even have 100 year plans on how to take over the world. So we need to start, we need to start battling like that. We need to start mapping out how we want to retake this culture for Christ in 50 years. Uh, because oftentimes as Christians, we get stuck in the day to day and, and we just, we're, all we're concerned about is today and tomorrow, which is, it's good to a certain extent. Scripture talks about that. But as far as retaking the culture for Christ, we need to map this thing out and game it out for the next 50 years because 
uh, turning back a culture that we have now, a very dark culture in many ways, turning it back to Christ is not going to be a one-week battle or a one-year battle. Um, so we have to be patient and diligent in our fight. And, and we've got to be in it for the long haul, don't we? Yeah, that's absolutely right. Hey, uh, Walker Wildman of the American Family Association, thank you so much for taking time to be with us uh, this morning. One more time, give us the website. Yeah, thanks, Alex. AFA.net is a website. AFA.net is a website. And I want to encourage everyone to get out and vote. Uh, just a, a little over a week from today, November 3rd, Tuesday, get out and vote up and down the ballot, whether it be city council, mayor, governor, whatever it is, make sure you vote and make sure your values are going with you to the ballot box. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Walker Wildman. We'll be back after this. Like no other nation, Americans have lived under the blessing of prosperity and liberty. These gifts are part of the heritage of a country grounded in the truths of Scripture and given by God to advance the gospel at home and abroad. In these days of moral and spiritual confusion, maintaining the freedom to express our faith in the public square has never been more important. The American Family Association, working to preserve religious liberty for generations to come. Welcome back to Truth for a New Generation. Alex McFarland here. We've been talking about some history regarding what the founders believed the role of religion would be in American life. And as I film this, this edition of the program, uh, at least 86% of Americans identify as religious believers in God, active members in some sort of faith community. And so clearly, not only did our founders really sow the seed of faith in God, Christianity, Judaism, religion in this nation, uh, we need it still. Every generation does. And um, I'm sure you've probably heard the story of the building of the Taj Mahal. My former boss and mentor, James Dobson, would tell the story. He wrote in one of his books 30 years ago how Shah Jahan in the 1600s in India, he promised his dying wife that he would build her the greatest uh, monument ever, the most beautiful mo mausoleum the world has ever seen. And so he set her casket in a field and around it began to build a great building. But uh, about three years into the project, he was so obsessed with the building of this ornate, beautiful structure, which became the Taj Mahal, that he forgot it was a monument to his wife. One day, he's walking backwards on the job site, and he trips over a, a wooden box. He tells the workers, throw it away, take it out to the garbage heap, which they do. Three months later, he realizes that what he threw away, and now it was unrecoverable, was the very beginning of the project itself, his wife and the casket. And so the beautiful building was finished, but along the way, they forgot the very purpose for which they begun in the first place. I fear that our nation is a lot like that. Because this nation, I believe with all my heart, it was ordained by God, it was raised up by the Lord, not merely as a, an economic enterprise, but it was a nation. America is and was a nation built on the principles of God's word. We've said this many times in the program, the founders quote the Bible 300, 3,154 times. And you know, uh, Benjamin Rush, one of our founders, one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence, talked about how we would be on dangerous ground if we deviated from the Bible and the scriptures. Let me read a quote by Noah Webster, who was a judge and a jurist and an author, and he wrote the American Dictionary of the English Language. He says, our liberty, our growth prosperity was a result of a biblical philosophy of life. Our continued freedom and success is dependent on our educating youth in America on the principles of Christianity. Very politically incorrect thing to say nowadays. But he says, look, um, all of the evils that our nation might experience, vice, crime, ambition, injustice, all proceed from our despising and neglecting of the precepts found in the Bible. Now, quickly, secularists will say, well, the First Amendment prohibits public life being influenced by religion. 
false. Fisher Ames, the man that wrote the First Amendment, wanted the Bible to be the principal text in all public schools. And I often ask people when I debate at universities, I'll say, how is it that 21st century secularists know more about the application of the First Amendment than the man who wrote the First Amendment? Clearly, the founders believed that religion and moral conviction would play a role in the country. So I want to challenge you to stand for that, to maybe get out of your comfort zone, speak up for God and truth and our nation. And Truth For New Generation will do our best to help you in that regard. What is truth? What is truth? Shabam, there it is, the big kahuna, the spicy enchilada, the fizzy lifting drink. The claim God exists is not a subjective one. This is not an evidence problem. So, like, truth is basically subjective. Yeah, yeah. emotional. This is Debunk TV. Hi, Alex McFarland here, and I want to say a big thank you to everybody who's been reading my book, The Assault on America, How to Defend Our Nation Before It's Too Late. The book's been doing very well. There's a lot of history, like the things you learn on the broadcast, but there's a lot about the future of the country and how everybody can be involved in making a positive difference for our freedoms and our liberties. The book is available everywhere online. And I want to thank Harrison House Publishers for doing such a good job in helping us get it out in a timely way. And I want to thank you for reading it. It does make a great Christmas gift, and it might actually change somebody's life. And I want to encourage you to read the book, Assault on America. Also, speaking of changing people's lives, you know, we had a newsletter that just hit home days ago. The Truth for New Generation, Alex McFarland newsletter, we write every other month. There's always two articles in it that I have a uh, biblical worldview, how to defend the Christian faith, a lot of inspiring stuff, what God is doing through the ministries, through the videos and my speaking and my travels. And in this one, we offered the new DVD produced by my friend Jerry Newcomb and James Kennedy Ministries. Dr. Jerry Newcomb, Peter Lilback, some of our frequent guests are in here, like Dr. Alveda King, the niece of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and Bill Federer. This is amazing. Uh, the Pilgrims, Thanksgiving, our religious heritage, and your national heritage. It's a great DVD. And for your donation in any amount, I want to send you this. And uh, you can go on our website. And if you don't get the TNG newsletter, sign up. You can go online to alexmcfarland.com. Send us your info and no obligation. We'll send you the newsletter and all of these products and things we make available and make you aware of because we want to, as we say, evangelize the lost and equip the saved. Uh, the donation envelopes and all of the things that we send to help raise support. It's enabled us to do major citywide events in 46 cities. We've been in front of well over half a million young people in the last decade. And so for God and country, let's stand together. The final thing I would say is if you support Truth for a New Generation television, we will send you, for your gift of at least $75, the Truth for a New Generation t-shirt and DVD set, Better Living Through Apologetics, says the t-shirt, and it's got the Truth for a New Generation logo on the back. And then finally, the award-winning DVD, The 21 Toughest Questions Your Kids Will Ask About Christianity, for your donation of at least $50, so if you send 50, you get the DVD set, seven hours of teaching. At least $75, you get the DVD and the T-shirt together. And what you're helping us do is proclaim Jesus to this nation and beyond. Thanks for your prayers and support.